Good morning guys, my name's Sandy, this is Sawing with Sandy. I'm out here standing amongst all the critters and the bugs out in my red pine forest. If you guys have been around the channel before, you know I spend a great deal of time here. And that's exactly what I'm doing here this morning. Spending a bit more time, doing a few chores, and well, putting to use some of my favorite tools. One of those is my Wallenstein FX85, my skidding winch, or logging winch as some of you guys will call it. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to hook that sucker up to my tractor, I'm going to run the winch line out to one of these trees here, put a pulley on there, and then I'm going to pull out the top part of that big beam you saw me cut for my new sawmill shed. So that's the rest of the tree. Haven't dragged it out yet. I just took the lower section to make the beam. You guys can check out that video if you want to see me cut a 20 foot beam on a 10 foot five sawmill, but still got to get the rest of this tree. Nothing goes to waste around here. So I'm going to take that out of here. Uh, one thing to point out, and this might be brand new to some of you, in the warm months like it is right now here in central Ontario, Canada, if you leave trees like this sitting around too long before you mill them or before you take the bark off them, what will happen is you'll get some boring insects going into your logs. When it does finally come time to mill it, you'll probably get some streaking, some uh, coloration going through the, through the wood. Sometimes that's desirable, most of the time for me because I'm just making dimensional lumber. It's not, and so I want to get this picked up before long. So. Based on its location here, I probably could just hook a chain to it and try to pull it out with the tractor. But what's going to happen is I'm likely going to get bound up on some of these other trees. You guys can see the, the limbs sort of intertwined in there. And so the easiest thing I can do is pull it straight out the way it fell in there. And that's why I'm running it over here. And I'm likely going to run a winch line off a cable, excuse me, off a pulley, probably right there. So that's what we're going to do. This is a very quick job, and the reason it's nice and quick is because of that winch right there. If you guys haven't seen this in action, you guys are in for a bit of a treat. Just pay attention though, because it goes very quick. This thing has sped up my operation from like tons of physical labor to very, very little. If you guys have a look there, there it is, the FX85. Pretty, pretty easy here. You guys can see we've got the lower, uh, the lower section we can run the cable through and then the upper section I'll just be pulling right off the top here today at the very end here you can see this bell this is what's going to loop around the log and then we'll uh, we'll pull on this this white uh, white line here and that'll engage the clutch in there powered from the PTO it'll pull the winch line back in so that's what we're doing here today glad you guys are all along welcome back Right now I'm just pulling the top of the tree, but the way I hooked up the winch line to this tree was with something I call a bell, a bell and a knob. And you guys can see, we bring this back here. You guys can see the bell is that blue part and then the knob, get it back here. The knob is that part right there. Now uh, this wrapped around the tree or whatever the last thing on the line is gonna be that you're pulling. And then the bell hooks on the, onto that. Now at uh, different companies I noticed they suggest you uh, pull different ways. Wallenstein suggests that you do not use this as an end stop. Uh, instead, you wrap this around your last object, in my case, this tree, hook the bell to it and pull that way. Now, there's also these things which come just up the line from that bell and knob. And uh, I'll call these slider keyholes. Uh, there's probably another name for it. I'm just not familiar with it. But that's what I call it. It slides along the line. You guys can see they slide individually. 
And uh, right here, this is the spot where you can run a choker chain through. And this winch came with some choker chains. And I just keep them on the side here. As you can see, here's my choker chains. And one's got, uh, one side of the choker chain has this on it to get under the log. And then on the other side, you have a slip hook. And there's my uh, slip hook. The uh, chain passes through that very easily, so it allows it to be uh, tightened up over the log. But anyways, let's assume you had more logs than just the one. You could uh, hook that chain around, uh, let's say, another log over here. And then you run it through this slip hook, slide, excuse me, slide keyhole. If you guys can imagine, maybe I can set you there for, for a second. All right. So you can run that right through like so. And then see how that hooks on to the, your, uh, your keyhole there. And then that'll be hooked to the log on the other end. And then what's going to happen when you pull this winch line, it's going to make its way all the way down to the end. And it's going to hit your first log that you hook to. And then you'll be pulling both logs at once. So you can, you can do that more than one time. You can do that with this slide keyhole right here and then run another chain to another log and when you pull the cable obviously that'll come out as a big bunch and then it'll uh, eventually make its way back to the winch that is of course unless you've got this in the way this right here is my directional pulley you guys can see here uh, this is a really good unit in my opinion i've used this quite a bit it's greasable who's this made by ranger no affiliation but it's worked for me uh, so that's going to allow me to pull the logs over to here. Then I'll have to come back, manually undo that to release the cable from the pulley. And then uh, I can figure a way to uh, get it get it up to the back of the track, back to the tractor to uh, skid it back to where it's going. All right, guys, and just one more thing before we fire up the tractor and get pulling on the winch with the skidding winch behind me. That right there, which I was calling a pulley, also referred to as a snatch block. This is a bit of an effort because when I'm pulling, I have to stop midway undo that pulley or snatch block from the cable in order to continue pulling the logs up to the winch. If I were to buy something like what's made by Wallenstein, which is a self-releasing snatch block, what happens is when the logs get pulled, they get pulled up to the point where they come into contact with the self-releasing snatch block. Then the cable automatically jumps off the snatch block without you having to go and undo it. Because of that, you can just continue pulling all the way from there jumps off the snatch block, and then you continue pulling right to the tractor. I kind of wish I had one, I just don't. Maybe one day the stars will align, but uh, that's another story. Let's go on up here and we'll get the tractor fired up. And on my tractor, I gotta make sure things are in neutral, which I don't get out of the tractor seat unless it is in neutral. I make sure the parking brake's engaged, and I also make sure the front end loader is fully down. Then we'll just fire it up. All right, fires right up. Uh, what I need to be concerned with at this point is these two switches, this one and this one. This switch here, you'll notice it's currently in the manual mode. If I were to click the top of it there, it goes into auto. I leave it in manual mode so that by pressing the button right beside it, I can manually engage the PTO. That's if you remember the power takeoff at the back of the tractor. If I have it in auto mode, anytime that three point hitch goes down, it's going to engage the PTO. I don't want that at this point. I like to have full control over it so it stays in manual for me. Now what I'm going to do with it in manual, I'm going to click this button. You'll notice it'll go red. That tells me that that is currently engaged and it also reminds me it's in manual mode. Now I'm going to leave it in neutral. I'm going to leave it at idle. Let's go around the back of the tractor. And now you're going to notice the PTO is spinning. The guard is in place, which is good. You don't want, uh, you don't want a PTO without a guard. And you can see it down there, it's engaging the, uh, the uh, input shaft on the skidding witch.
just as I'm getting suited up here to do some cutting, you guys can see this fancy thing. I'm not talking about the chainsaw, I'm talking about the mount. Check that thing out. That is custom. I made this quite a, quite a while ago, probably like three years ago. Uh, what is this, like a two by eight, I think. And I did, a, I did a plunge cut with a chainsaw. And then I just left enough room on both sides of the plunge cut to run some wire through, which hooks onto my grill there. Uh, I know there are products out there that will hold a chainsaw. I had a hard time finding one that would go with a cab tractor. Now there's not a lot of space here to mount anything, front or back, and so I came up with this. This was low cost, and I can always uh, always make a second edition if I need it, if that thing ever breaks, but so far so good. That just holds my chainsaw in there, sits quite, quite firmly, and uh, anyways, yeah, that's it. That chainsaw is a Husky 555. We're gonna fire it up. I'm gonna cut a tree to length and go from there. warms up I'm just gonna show you guys what I was talking about if I wanted to keep pulling this log up to the tractor to skid it I'd have to come back here loosen this off and I'd have to take it out of the out of the snatch block like that and then I could continue pulling it I'm not assuming this is still hooked up to the log so just an extra step if I have the self-releasing snatch block it'd be a little bit easier <laughs>
there's just something about a freshly uh, freshly sharpened chainsaw you guys saw me cutting there i was just about ready to cut the rest of the tree not because i was going to use it just because i wanted to let her go cutting the rakers way down as you saw making the making the chain nice and sharp gives it uh, gives it a little bit of extra gusto and makes it makes it kind of fun to keep cutting so we got three lengths here we got two eight foot logs i'm going to make these into two by sixes i tend to have an idea as to the lumber i need when i'm cutting the trees uh, that way I don't cut stuff I don't need. Two of these, two eight-foot lengths, are going to be two by sixes. That over there, that uh, ten-foot length I cut, that uh, piece up top there, that's going to be a four by four. Probably a four by four and a two by four. We'll see what we get out of it. So let's winch these up to the up to the tractor, then we'll skid them back to the sawmill. I know some of you guys will ask me about it, so I'll just tell you about it. This right here is the tape that I was using to measure the log lengths just a minute ago. Uh, what it's got on the end here is it's got this uh, this little hook. You hook it on to the end of the log, and once you get down to wherever you're cutting, you can just pull on it, and then that goes straight, so you don't have to walk to the end of the log and unhook it. This is made by the U.S. Tape Company. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other manufacturers out there. This just happened to be the one that I bought. Uh, this, I think, is 50 or 75 feet in length. You guys can see the tape here. It's retractable. It's a metal tape. And on one side, on one side it has imperial measurements, so inches and feet. On the other side, it has metric system, uh, as you guys can see, meters, centimeters, etc. Uh, believe it or not, here in Canada, we typically go with uh, the metric system. But when it comes to lumber, oftentimes you'll go to the lumber yard and you'll buy using the imperial measurement, inches, feet, etc., etc. But anyways, that's the unit that's on my hip. Works quite well for me so far. And so, uh, yeah, that's that. That's one of those things, the common loon, look it up on Google. That's one of those things, the birds, that really give off that call that if you know what it sounds like and you uh, have experienced it out in the bush before or out in the wild, very, very cool, very awesome to hear. It's actually my ringtone on my phone. Uh, anyways, the common loon, look it up. It's one of those birds that um, it's black in color, a bit of white. Uh, it actually doesn't go on land. You'll notice it just goes in the water. The position of its feet, it's quite a ways back towards its tail. So that makes it sort of imbalanced if you think about land creatures. And so it tends to dwell right in the water and doesn't go on land. That's why when I see it, it's not in the woods unless it's flying. So kind of neat. Anyways, look it up. Back to it.
All right, guys, no problems there. We got all three of those logs up here to my sawmill with the old winch here. That thing has tons of power. It definitely didn't struggle in the least with those little logs. I don't know where it's going to meet its match, but it probably will one day. I just haven't even come close to finding it. Anyways, in a perfect world, I wouldn't be skidding these logs down the trail like that. I'd actually have like a log trailer. If you guys could imagine the perfect setup, you've got your winch on the back here. Hook to that is your trailer. And so when you come to situations like I had, you pull the log out a little bit, at least close enough for the grapple on the trailer to reach. The arm comes out on the trailer, picks up the logs, loads them onto the trailer, and then you drive it up here to the sawmill. That'd be a perfect world, but obviously uh, we can only do uh, what we can with what we have. And I only have the winch, and so we skidded them here. Another alternative I could have done there, I know some of you will mention this, I could have picked these logs up with the forks uh, and then just drove them out here. Now I was thinking about that and there was a narrow spot back there and I was thinking it might be a little close for that 10 foot log. It's actually about 10 foot six. And so I figured out what the heck, it's already on the winch cable. We'll just skid them on up here. So we got those there, the one log I just loaded a moment ago and I don't tend to uh, wanna load from the end like this all the time. I'm gonna be loading from the front once I clean out those trees and build a log bunk. But we got that log loaded nonetheless with the forks here. If you don't own a set of forks, I would say the forks are one of those, one of those tools that is right up there with a the bucket. It, uh, it just matches, it goes well with the tractor, allows you to do a lot of things. So got the log up here, nice short one. Gonna make some two by sixes, maybe some four by fours, I'm not sure yet. Uh, then we'll build the log bunks out front. We'll clear those trees right there so that any future logs, they get loaded from the front nice and easy. And we don't have to fan dangle them through the end there like I just did. So come on back next time. We're going to be firing up the sawmill here. The old HM 130 Max, the Woodlander trailer. We'll fire that thing up. We'll make some lumber. Life's good. Glad you guys joined me. Take care. Make sure you subscribe. Give her the old like a -roo, and I'll see you next time.